Good day, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we are back together again. So this time we are going to be looking at question seven, electrostatics. Right. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you are part of the family. Right. So let's go into our question. And they say to us, we've got a small negative charge. OK, that is placed at a fixed distance from a charge sphere Q. Right. It experiences a force F as shown in the diagram. Now, in this case, that already tells me, ladies and gents, if we've got a negatively charged uh, object that experiences a force towards Q, well, that must be a force of attraction. So it does already tell us that Q must be positive. Right. So they say uh, the charge is now removed. OK. Um, they say to us, draw a the electric field pattern for the charged uh, sphere Q. All right, so they wanted you to first just acknowledge that Q must be positively charged. And if that is the case, remember when we draw the field uh, pattern, electric field pattern for this, okay, our field lines should consistently be, move, be moving rather away from uh, our charge, right? because we assume a positive test charge. And so that means this is the kind of drawing that I would be expecting. Now, ladies and gents, very important. When you are drawing this drawing, it is important that your lines do not cross each other. Secondly, it is also important that uh, in this case, your, your you know, the, the lines rather, the field lines, uh, should show the direction. So that's the second thing that is important. Uh, but also, it is important that they are also attached to your charge. Okay, so you can draw this as a dot. Okay, and just show the field line pattern in that way. All right, let's go to the next uh, question. They say to us, sphere S is attached to the ceiling at point P by a light inextensible string. When sphere R on an insulated stand is brought closer to sphere S, they repel, uh, they, they repel and sphere S comes to rest. Okay, so we know that sphere S as it is actually here, sphere S is at rest. Okay, which means the forces that are acting on sphere S must be at equilibrium. Right, now they say to us, uh, uh, Right, it comes to rest with the horizontal distance between the centers equal to 0 0.03. All right, now, they say state Coulomb's law in words. Again, ladies and gents, please, I want you to invest in uh, uh, being able to remember all of your principles. We know that the uh, electrostatic force uh, between uh, two-point charges is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charge and inversely proportional to the square of that distance apart, right? Okay, so they say to us, draw a labeled free body diagram showing all forces acting on sphere S. Now, what are the forces that are acting on sphere S? So, firstly, okay, let me just give myself a bit of space. So, we're going to have force, okay. So, there it is there. We're going to have the gravitational force over there. Okay, so that's going to be the weight. Okay, and remember that sphere S is experiencing a force of repulsion away from uh, sphere R. So this is going to be the force of repulsion. Or we can say the electrostatic force. So force of repulsion. It's always important for us to label the forces in full, right? Uh, and this would be the tension on string. Okay, right. Uh, I don't know why I'm writing. Right, so that string there, tension on the string. So those are the three forces, and that is for three marks. So we expect that that should be the case. All right, now let's go to the next question. They say to us, sphere R has a charge of six micro uh, nanocoulombs. So this guy is six nanocoulombs. And sphere S has got a charge of three nanocoulombs. Okay. And a mass of 0 0.15 grams. They want us to calculate 
uh, the angle theta. Now, ladies and gents, um, I really like the principle. For me, whenever we've got a system that is at equilibrium, well, there's what we call the triangular law of vectors in equilibrium. So in this case, which are the vectors in equilibrium, right? We've got the weight, which we can calculate, by the way, we'll come back to that just a bit. But we've got the force of repulsion. Let's call it FR. And we also have the tension on the string. And do you notice, ladies and gents, those forces are actually at equilibrium with one another. And as a result, they will then uh, form a head to tail diagram. So this would be the tension on the string. Okay, right. So these are the three forces. Now, when we've drawn this, now remember that theta is the angle between the vertical as well as that tension over there. So which means, oops, uh, I removed that mistakenly. So which means theta would be this angle over there, right? So now question is, am I able to determine any of the two forces? And absolutely we are able to, right? We can get the force of repulsion. So force of repulsion, that's KQ, R, Q, S divided by R squared. So let's find out what that force is, right? That's going to be 9 times 10 to the power 9. The charge on R is 6 nanocoulombs. That's times 10 to the power negative 9, not uh, 6. That's also 3 times 10 to the power negative 9. And this is divided by the distance between them, which is 0 0.03 squared. Right. Let's find that out quickly. So that's 9 exponent of 9 multiplied by 6. Uh, I'm using the exponent button, guys. The one next to the answer button, it makes it so much easier to make the calculation um, in this case, so exponent of negative 9. And this is divided by 0 0.03, but we square that. Okay, I get a value of 0 0.0018. If we are to express it in scientific notation, that's 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 4 newtons. Right, so that's the force of repulsion that I obtain over there. Right, now, which other force could we determine? So the other force that we could determine was the weight because we are given the mass in this case, right? So firstly, the mass is in grams. We need to convert it to kilograms. So our mass will be 0 0.16, right? How do I convert from grams to kilograms? You just divide by 1,000. So 0 0.16 divided by 1,000. Okay, and uh, just uh, for the sake of time, so which means the gravitational force or the weight of this guy is mass times gravitational acceleration, right? So I'm going to say 0 0.16 divided by 1000 multiplied by 9.8, all right? So that's 0 0.18, uh, rather 0 0.16 divided by 1000 and I multiply that by 9.8. All right, I get a value of, okay, want us to be as accurate as possible. So that's 1,76 times 10 to the power negative 3 newtons. So if we go back to our diagram, we're able to find FR, which is on the opposite side of your angle, right? And we said this is 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4. We're also able to find the weight, which is on the adjacent side of your triangle. And so this would be 1.76 times 10 to the power negative 3. All right. Now, to get the angle... What is opposite of adjacent? It's definitely going to be the 10 of theta. That's opposite, which is FR. 
over the adjacent, which is the weight. So 10 theta would be 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 4 divided by 1.76 times 10 to the power negative 3. And so theta would be the arctan of that entire thing. Okay, 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 4 over 1.76 times 10 to the power negative 3. Right, so let's put that in our calculator. So, going to say this is shift 10 of 1.8. All right, and I get a value. Oops, I see that. Okay, so I get a value of 5.84 degrees. So that's the value of our angle. All right, I hope that you got this, ladies and gents. Another way that you could have done this, you could have used components of a vector, uh, but I prefer this one. Okay, and in that case, you would have been able to get the, uh, the vertical component, an expression for the vertical component, as well as the horizontal component uh, for um, the tension, right? And in that case, you'd still be able to obtain the same value as well. All right, and that is how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. Please join us again when we do question number eight. If you have not subscribed, what have you been waiting for? We will see you guys again next time. Please stay tuned on this channel. Shop shop.